So when patients come in, we always review their CAT scans with them. It's really important. It helps them to know what their symptoms are and how it might be affecting the inside of their sinuses. So when we look at CAT scans, they're done as cross-sectional images, lots of pictures, a lot of different ways, top to bottom, side to side, front to back. Front to back looks like your face, so it's the one that's gonna be the easiest for us to go over. The pictures are taken as cross-sectional images, so slices from the tip of your nose to the back of your head. And when you're looking at a CAT scan, all you really need to know is that the bone is white, air is black, and everything else is gray. Your brain is over here, your eyes are over here, this is the inside of your nose, and your septum divides the right and left side of the nasal cavity. And so when we're looking at scans, we're trying to look for disease, problems, things that match the symptoms of our patients. So the CAT scan is a roadmap to help us clarify what needs to be done to help a patient. So you can clearly see a lot of gray in the sinuses. That's chronic sinusitis. This is a very bad case, a patient who has a lot of infections, and these infections recur he'll have something that feels like a really bad cold and take antibiotics, and once that gets better, this is what's left. So this is chronic sinus thickening of the maxillary sinuses, or the sinuses in your cheek. When we're born, our sinuses are underdeveloped, our heads are small. Little air cells start to develop as our heads grow, and that develops our sinuses. But when you look really close, everyone's sinuses are just a little bit different. The cheek sinuses develop in the same place, the ethmoid sinuses develop in the same place, but they're different, they're different air cells. So just like our thumbprints are different from close up, so are our sinuses. And that explains why some people have more trouble with chronic sinusitis. Their, their anatomy has been tighter, so they can't uh, circulate air, ventilate as well. And so they start to develop sinus disease gradually. So in this particular scan, you can see that the patient has very underdeveloped frontal sinuses. That means that they are really small and the passages leading to them are also really tight and small. So that um, situation makes it more difficult for a patient to deal with a little bit of inflammation. So they're gonna end up with a little more sinus disease. Here you can see there's a tremendous amount of thickening into the maxillary cheek sinus. So what we do now, since the patient has a pretty straight septum, is offer in-office balloon sinuplasty. That's a procedure where we go in and we dilate open the sinuses. It is a very minimally invasive um, and not very painful procedure that's done. And we kind of equate it to a dental procedure. It's something that's done under local anesthesia and you can go back to work the next day.